to Estadio Morumbi, home to one of the powerhouses of Brazilian football, Sao Paulo FC. Two. This is Peter Drury, you and next week, that riding decision. insights will be Jim Beglin. Here Peter, we have nothing to discuss. It's a pleasure privilege for me to be here. Because my opinion... Who do you think this turns on, Jim? Who else but Zlatan Ibrahimovic, capable of executing what others are unlikely to even try. He functions with a, an outrageous edge, you know whether the class of as ultra-confident or arrogant, he knows how to entertain. Of a gaming He'll be over a goal or two. That was under duress, duress by his the He's in the box if he gets his head up. Chavinho! The defense had it exactly where they wanted and to be. They didn't even give it the space at the or time, the room to turn. And I think it was all face during whatnot. This threat becomes a much lesser issue. There were hundreds of here. sites out there that did talk about game, but it's those Hibber sites Hibber started to lose money. And the only way they could keep this go, the money it's trail going concerning video games and whatnot. Well, unfortunately, a they ball. had to deal with clickbait articles and other now such things. Oh, and that's unfortunate. Oh, I think the thing is unfortunate. That's a but good a chance that is the yeah. way we have built All the internet business. With such intensity, but and it just is needs a horrendously to to the sad. Finishing. You know, it's the only thing that's missing so far. Horrendously sad. Because I believe in Real Madrid, very much the team that started on the front foot. Look, it's Go testament Saku. to a very vigorous start that has clearly and caught their opposition cold. Here. In many just respects, calling on to their superiority. represent a political entertainment model. Passing it over, cut out in the nick of time. What a corner! A political entertainment model that. Its entertainment is connected to its politics. It is no longer connected to the audience of video games. And the fact that Gawker has announced that they will become more political fits this narrative. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is a, the politics of video games are now about to so anybody that comes up and tells you that uh, uh, Kotaku can get better and all this, it, it is a lie. It is an absolute lie because they are now a political site and everything that Gawker does from here on in is always going to be political. Let's get that clear. Let's get that clear. That's a very good battle there. Terrific to watch. These businesses don't want to deal with politics. They just want to develop and make things for the of their audience. Video. The things they should have gone at. Like the issue with towards the front. Bethesda and their the issues with the, end with the game bioengine. The issues with check. the zero she frame on Xbox One. The Shavinio. other issues with Shoots. battle Goal! on Real PlayStation Madrid. 4 being less than dirty frame. All yeah, of these things pitch, could have been talked about on a Kotaku. The they game have game never to touched it. And, and what and was the thing they touched the during the time the Fallout was coming out? And they were promoting Fallout. You understand? That whole <laughs> Bullshit about it. They were promoting Fallout. What were they talking about? Armika getting censored. I said that the last time I talked here on YouTube. Said it the last time. Instead of these technical issues that the Bethesda always gets away from. That's the thing you should have been talking about. Not being blacklisted by the two companies. They have bigger problems that you can possibly imagine with how they develop their engines and whatnot. I feel sorry for y'all people that you think that 
the rest is all the rest of the bumper is always going to be doing right by y'all. It's not happening. It's not happening. Oh, they feel well to take the lead there, but they can't. We saw it in Metal Gear Solid 5. And the fact we saw it in Metal Gear Solid 5. We saw it in other games that are coming out. We saw it with Platinum pre beta no alpha build. A freaking near two. Again, this should have never been out. Never came out. Not even in the possibility. Driven out. However, they're getting more out of these tools than the Western developers are, and they, and they have already built engines not necessarily connected with Unreal Engine 4. They are not necessarily connected with Unreal Engine 4. Excuse me. <coughs> that said, they said they will work on the PlayStation 4 and it looks amazing. So I don't know why why these folks are still using these same engines. 15, 20 year engines. He scores! That not that are just behind the curve. And I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm not saying it's feasibility or whatnot. But I don't understand it. Could y'all go to say that you're blacklisted and you're blacklisted? So what? You didn't even talk about the issues with the frame rate on Xbox One and PlayStation 4. I never heard about that. You were more busy about talking about the censorship bullshit. You were more busy talking about Lincoln. You were busy talking about all this other crap. Did we didn't need to know. We're paying sixty dollars for a game that has a bug. Not game breaking, but embarrassed. And then you expect me to believe that you won't get blacklisted. You're not even telling the truth. Oh, we're going for the truth. The truth was the game was at least a year but the year ahead of schedule. Why can't you announce that? You refuse to do that. But that's your that's what Kotaku is saying. And everybody, and uh, everybody going after them, developers going after them, they have every right to. Because you're concentrating on, they decided to concentrate on the wrong things. They decided to be TMZ. And they keep lying to themselves and saying, oh, we can't be objective and all that. We're trying to be 100% objective and all this other thing. They're lying through their teeth. Kotaku's lying through their teeth. And I want to make this clear so everybody can hear it. The last time we had anywhere near journalism, or what you consider journalism, I put it in air quotes, was 1UP. The day that 1UP died, it was the beginning of the end of game journalism and the start of the TMZ vacation, or what they call in the sports industry, the Kardashianation of the news industry or you can say the gaming industry that is all this war that started years ago it started about one 18 months ago has been it's all about going to the lowest common mainstream denominator it's all about that it has never been about you guys knowing the information that is coming out, the games that are coming out, and knowing what time, what types of issues are with the game. And you notice something that because I am not 
all the way agreeing with Ubisoft or Bethesda or any of the Western developers coming out right now because of one reason and one reason only. I have seen delays come out, especially for the Japanese games. They are being delayed three months, three months at a time to make sure that the game can run. Ideos has said that instead of early next year for success, it's going to be August, possibly September of next year. That's how bad things have gotten in the Western development world. Why? Because everybody is playing scared. Too far out for the shot. Everybody is playing scared of who they're gonna hire, who they're gonna fire. I don't understand it myself. It's everybody's worried about these petty little battles that are going around in this industry right now, and it's sickening to me, guys. I understand that these corporations keep working to the bone. I understand there needs to be a union, a trade organization that protects the rights of you workers because you have families to raise and they cannot be living under the ages of Les Moonves and his Metacritic bullcrap.